And y'all want to know what my grandmother said to me. I don't even know why I'm even sharing this on here, but I just feel it on my heart. Hey, homemakers. Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, welcome to Habits of a Homemaker. My name is Angel, and I'm your digital homemaking coach here, where I teach you how to cultivate godly habits and character within your home for the glory of God. I am also the author of How to Be a Successful Homemaker e-guide, where I teach you everything you need to know to thrive in your homemaking. So today, ladies, I'm going to share some wisdom with you all, and I'm also going to allow you all into my little space to learn a little bit more about me and most importantly a little bit more about my beautiful late grandmother Elaine. In today's video I will be sharing five homemaking lessons that I learned from my grandmother. Now my grandmother was not called grandma. She wasn't even called Nana. She was called Mama. That's right. <laughs> we called my grandmother Mama. So every time we wanted something, every time we went to address her or talk to her, we would say, Mama. Hey, Mama. Love you, Mama. Mama. <laughs> and I miss saying that so much. But I want to honor her publicly and share some of the valuable homemaking lessons that I learned from her. Now, my grandmother never, you know, set me down and said, here, these are homemaking lessons that I want to teach you. During the time when I was a child, I had never even heard of the term homemaker per se. So I didn't even know exactly what to call it. But this is what I saw my grandmother model. This is how my grandmother operated and was and conducted herself as a woman, as the lady of the house. And these things that I'm going to share with you are things that I literally watched my grandmother demonstrate all the time. So I want to share those things with you all today. All right. The first thing is to rise early to prepare and pray. Ladies, you know that I am a big stickler. <laughs> for rising early to prepare for your household. And I even talk about those things in my How to Be a Successful Homemaker e-guide, the importance of rising early and how you start off your day. I learned that from my grandmother. My grandmother would wake up super, super duper early in the morning. I'm talking about Proverbs 31 while it was yet night, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about before anybody else got up in the household while it was still dark outside, the sun hadn't even officially rose yet, my grandmother was up and she was up preparing her household. She was literally preparing a place for us spiritually and naturally. She would be preparing me and my brother's lunch at the time and she always made us hot lunches. She was preparing our lunch for school. So she would go ahead and she would be packing up our lunches. She would be cooking some good hot food because she wanted to make sure that her babies were fed a nutritious meal, okay? I'm an early 90s baby, okay? So my grandmother, she made sure that she put the hot food in a the thermosis, okay? Y'all leave a comment below if you remember what a thermos is. I'm not talking about the new school thermos. I'm talking about the old school thermos that used to be in a lunchbox and then had a little like cup that you could drink out of or eat out of. I'm talking about those, okay? The old school thermoses. So my grandmother would be preparing our food. And while my grandmother was preparing food, while she was prepping for the day, for the morning and how things would go, she was praying, honey. My grandmother was a praying woman, okay? She was an evangelist. And she always prayed and she always thanked God. My grandmother to this day, my grandmother and my mom are two of the women that literally every time I talk to them, they're always giving God glory. They're always giving God praise. But my grandmother was such a grateful woman. She had such a spirit of gratitude and every day she thanked God. Every single day when my brother and I got up to get ready for school, the first thing that had to come out of our mouths was thank you, Jesus, for waking us up this morning. And that is literally what comes out of my mouth, my husband's mouth, my children's mouth every single day is thank you, Jesus, for waking us up this morning. Our kids know as soon as your eyes open, because by the grace of God, are they opening? You need to thank Jesus. Open up your mouth. My grandmother will always say, open up your mouth. <laughs> 
she was a Sunday school teacher too. And she always believed that you needed to speak out. She didn't like you mumbling and, you know, acting all timid and stuff. She would say, speak out. <laughs> and she wanted us to open our mouth and give God praise. And we did. And we prayed and she made us get on our knees every morning. And we, after we made up our beds and we had to get on our knees and we had to pray. And she really believed in reverencing the Lord. And so rising early to start your day, to prepare and to pray was one of the most essential things that I learned from my grandmother, which is going to bring me into number two, which is set the atmosphere and the tone for your day. So with my grandmother rising early and preparing and praying, my grandmother was setting the atmosphere up. My grandmother was creating and cultivating a space and an environment where negativity couldn't reside, <laughs> where, you know, um, having a pity party and all of that stuff. My grandmother was not that type of woman. Okay. <laughs> she was not that type of woman. And I thank God for that because literally I never saw, and it doesn't mean that they didn't struggle or go through anything. Don't get me wrong, ladies, but I never saw my grandmother. And my mother says this about my grandmother and I don't even see my mother do it. Never saw my grandmother be depressed. Never saw my grandmother mope around the house. And my grandmother passed away when I think I was, I was pregnant with my second child at the time. And I believe that I might have been 25. And that was five years ago. I'm 30 now. So my grandmother passed away when I was 25. In my entire 25 years of life, I never, I am not exaggerating. I'm not lying. I never once Ever. And I spent a lot of time with my grandmother, heard my grandmother ever complain, ever, ever. My grandmother literally never complained. I never heard my grandmother complain. My grandmother was such a thankful woman and she set the atmosphere and she made sure that we were going to have an atmosphere of thanksgiving and praise and gratitude. She set the tone and because she wasn't walking around and going about her task, mumbling and grumbling and complaining and being bitter. We did not see that example. So we literally modeled after what we saw. And I want you ladies to catch the power in that. You have influence in your home. Okay. Bump a social media or anything else. Your first greatest influence is inside of your home. What are your children seeing you do because they're going to model after that. If you are a woman that is every day complaining and mumbling and grumbling and irritated and aggravated and frustrated, your children are going to literally, they're going to soak that up. That's going to become the norm for them. And they're going to begin to model that. But when you are a woman who fears the Lord, when you are a woman who praises God, no matter what, when you are a woman who walks by faith and not by sight, when you are a woman who speaks and declares the word of God over her household, your children are going to model that. They're going to start saying those things and demonstrating the behaviors that they see their mother demonstrate. So don't underestimate the power of setting the atmosphere and setting the tone in your home. The third thing that I learned from my grandmother was how to have structure for my day. My grandmother made sure things were in order. My grandmother believed in that. That's the one thing that she always talked about was order, making sure stuff was in order, not being out of order. And she would reference that not just naturally, but spiritually. She was a woman who she believed that things needed to be in order in God's order. And so setting up a structure for the day, we weren't just roaming around the house mindlessly throughout the day and no purpose, no goal for the day or anything like that. No, there was structure. She had an order to things. She had us on a schedule. It wasn't like a strict schedule where, okay, at nine o'clock, you have to be doing this at 9 15, do this at 9 30, at 10 45. It wasn't like like that but she had us on a schedule where there was a routine set in place and you ladies I share with you all my routine in the EGOT as well because there was a routine what do you do in the morning time in the morning time I told you all what did we do we woke up we made our bids 
we prayed, we went and we freshened up for the day. So we brushed our teeth and we washed our face. We had to do that before we came to the breakfast table. We came to the breakfast table, we ate our food and then we went and we washed our hands. We had a whole routine for how things went. During the summer, my grandmother would host a camp at her house for all of the grandchildren. And we had our camp. And my brother and I, we would get up early. My grandmother had us for summer camp. Y'all, we were up by 7 a.m. And we were outside setting up the camp. She had us set up the different stations. We would be preparing and waiting for our cousins to come over. And we would have our stations set up. We would have everything ready to go early in the morning. She believed in having that structure. So we would have breakfast. We would have our activities. And then we would have lunch. After lunch, we would have um, a quiet time. She would say, you know, you can either take a nap, you can color, you can read a book, but honey, you gonna sit still and you gonna be quiet. <laughs> it was no just, you know, running around, uh-uh. I don't even know what my grandmother was doing during that time, but I'm sure that she was using that to her advantage, but she was like, mm -mm, these kids, it's gonna be some order in this home, okay? So. We did things in a certain way and in a certain order. Um, and we had so much fun. Okay, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like it was a strict militant household. My grandmother had fun with us. My grandmother allowed us to have fun and we played outside and we had games. My grandmother made the best meals and the best snacks for us. We had a ball. We enjoyed life. We really did. But we had structure and that structure allowed us to have discipline. Okay, you cannot cultivate discipline without structure. And I praise God for that. And I'm thankful that my grandmother instilled that into us as children because you can't really go about life just hanging out in the balance, like having no structure, having no vision, you know, and just doing whatever, whenever, every single day, you know, it's one thing to be spontaneous and have those different moments and things like that. But when you don't know what your purpose is, when you don't know, okay, these are the things that need to be accomplished this week or this month or this day, and you're just kind of, you know, scrimmaging about you can go in a million circles and still haven't accomplished anything because you never had a vision. So having that structure for the day really, really helped me as a homemaker. All right, the fourth thing was to clean as you go. That is something I learned from my grandmother. To be honest, I'm not as polished in that area as my grandmother, but it is something that I still do. And cleaning as you go, I really saw my grandmother do that so much. Sometimes I have to pause on that for a minute because I have four little kids, okay? And they're really getting into stuff. So sometimes the cleaning as I go may take a little bit longer than my grandmother did, but it's going to get done. So I would see my grandmother clean as she went. You know, I never took, once again, I never, <laughs> ever, ever, ever saw my grandmother with a dirty home ever, ever. And I know that it wasn't just during my life while I had her, I know that my mom and her siblings, it was the same way. My grandmother had them make sure that they cleaned up behind themselves. They did, my grandmother was a stickler. Everybody in my family is a stickler when it comes to having stuff in order and clean. The women in my family do not play. <laughs> they don't play about that. They don't play about <laughs> keeping their houses clean and in order. And my grandmother always, literally y'all, literally always had a clean house. And I know that she was able to maintain that because she cleaned as she went. She didn't allow things to just pile up and just leave them and say, okay, I'm gonna just leave the dishes, you know, in the sink overnight because I'm tired and I just don't feel like it. She made sure that after every meal, while she even be cooking, she had hot soapy water running. It's okay. My grandmother made sure that she cleaned as she went. As soon as company left, She's cleaning up after them. As soon as like you get up from the table, okay, like she was a she was a stickler for that. And because of that, not only was her house always clean, not only was she um never like bogged down with having to, you know, handle and tackle a huge mess at once. I'll tell you how else that benefited her, which is tip number five, and that was hospitality, being hospitable. 
my grandmother because because of all the things we talked about earlier in the video and then the last thing i talked about is cleaning as you go my grandmother was always ready to serve always ready to serve she was a hospitable woman if if a neighbor rang the doorbell my grandmother was ready to open her door and allow them to come in comfortably and to sit down in her clean living room and to get, you know, get them a cup of lemonade or iced tea, offer them a refreshment because she had baked something or had some type of meal or, you know, something to give them, to offer them. And she was just ready to receive. She had set the atmosphere in her home and she was always praying and prayerful and thankful. So she had the right spirit to receive them. You know, all of those little things, even as I'm sharing these things now, I'm seeing how they all work together to create and cultivate an amazing homemaking experience. Not just an event, but an experience, an atmosphere every single day. Now, when I say that, ladies, does that mean that I'm saying your home better be perfect and spotless and you better not have a crumb in sight and you better not have any toys on the floor. I'm not saying that at all because at the end of the day, ladies, we all have different homes. We all have different families and family dynamics. You may have eight kids, you know, who are all under the age of 10. Somebody else may have two kids and they're teenagers. Somebody else may have no children. It's so many different dynamics that play a role in how our homes you know, run and what they look like and all of those different things like that. So please don't hear me wrong when I'm saying these things. But what I want you to take from this is that you can implement these things to have a better homemaking experience. It's not going to be perfect, right? Nobody's home is perfect. No woman is perfect. We aren't perfect homemakers, but we serve and we know the only perfect one who ever walked the earth. And that was Jesus, Yeshua, okay, Yahweh, the most high God. It's my grandmother served him with her life and honored him throughout her task. Mother's Day is coming up and I just wanted to do something to honor my late grandmother because she is a huge part. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she is a huge part of why I am the woman and the homemaker I am today. And, oh, I love my grandmother so much. It's even been things that now after she is gone to be with the Lord that I have learned from her, even in her death, that I can look back and reflect on her life and I can see and I can still learn things and I'm still learning things about her to this day. So I just want to encourage you ladies to love on the wonderful, beautiful women in your lives. Whether it's your grandmother, your mother, your auntie, your sister, your friend, your best friend, your cousin, whoever it is. I encourage you to love on them, to give them their flowers while they are still here. I thank God that you know, I had a great relationship with my grandmother. And even, you know, when I got older and got married and moved to a different state, I thank God that I kept in contact with my grandmother, that I called my grandparents, you know, both of them, my grandmother and my grandfather are both deceased. But I had a great relationship with them. They were like second parents to me. And I called them, I checked on them and we chatted and we laughed. And the last conversation that I had with my grandmother before she passed away was actually, we were on FaceTime. And like I said, I was pregnant with my daughter Noah at the time. And y'all want to know what my grandmother said to me. I don't even know why I'm even sharing this on here, but I just feel it on my heart. The last thing my grandmother said to me was, Angel, baby, I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. And she told me how proud she was of the woman, of the homemaker, of the wife and mother, the woman, the God-fearing woman that I was and that I had become to be. 
And I thank God that my grandmother, before, a few years before she passed away, she got to even hear my testimony that I share and bless beyond the bruises I talk about. And I thank God that she got to just see me flourish, not in any material things, but she got to see me give my life to Christ at a young age. She got to see me serve the Lord and love him and choose him. I'm grateful that when she passed away, that she was able to be proud of me. And I was able to hear that from her. I will forever cherish that and forever cherish all of the amazing things that she taught me, that she instilled in me, and that she modeled as a woman and as a homemaker. So thank you ladies so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and share it with another woman today. Make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of all of my new content. And I have some very exciting news and things coming for you all very, very soon this week. So please make sure that you stay involved. Follow me on Instagram at Habits of a Homemaker and I will see you beauties in the next video. Love you ladies so much and I pray that you all have a wonderful, happy Mother's Day weekend. Bye ladies.